Uh, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance that your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all our Guru Maharajas. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you may take the uh, call over. Hari Bol. Hare Krishna, thank you. My obeisance is all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Thank you. And we'll begin with the verse. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. Yeah. So this chapter is the residence of Jambudweep of her prayers. It's a very uh, powerful chapter because many of the personalities that speak in this chapter are exalted. Uh, these verses now are by Lakshmi Devi. We heard from Prahlad Maharaj before. So. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine Nirse Sasunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine. Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakripa Sindhave Bacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakti Rindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Satvam mama chuta srisni vaditam karambujam yatvam adadya adai sadvatam bibarsi man lakshman varena mayaya ka isvarez yehitam O mm -hmm. oh, infallible one. So uh, Lakshmi is offering prayers to Lord Krishna. O oh, infallible one, your lotus palm is the source of all benedictions. Therefore, your prior devotees worship it and you very mercifully place your hand on their heads. I wish that you would also place your hand on my head. For although you already bear my insignia of golden streak on your chest, I regard this honor as merely a kind of false prestige for me. You show your real mercy to your devotees, not to me. Of course, you are the supreme absolute controller and no one can understand your motives. <laughs> Report. In many places, the Shasta described the Supreme Personality of Godhead as being more inclined towards his devotee than towards his wife, who always remains in his, on his chest. In Srimad Bhagavatam 11, 14, 15, it is said, Nata me priyatma tatman atma yona yonir na sankaraha na cha sankarsana na shri here, Krishna plainly says that his devotees are more dear to him than Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Shankar, Karsana, the original cause of creation, the goddess of fortune, or even his own self. Elsewhere in Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami says, Niman Vidincho Nabhavo Nasri Apyanga. Samsraya, Prashadam Libere, Gopi Yatta Prapya Vimukri Vimukti Dat. The Supreme Lord can award liberation to anyone. The same Lord who can award liberation to him he showed more mercy towards the gopis than to Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and even the goddess of fortune, who is only his own wife and is associated with his own body. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam also states, 
Nayam Sriangal Udnitam Ratam Prasadam Swayositam Nalina Gadad Racham Kutanya Rasol Savatswa Ujadanda Grihatta Kantam Labdhyasi Samyar Udagam Raja Sundarinam the gopis received benedictions from the Lord that neither Lakshmi Devi nor the most beautiful dancers in the heavenly planets could attain. In the Rasa dance, the Lord showed his favor to the most fortunate gopis by placing his arms on their shoulders and dancing with each of them individual. No one can compare with the gopis who received the causeless mercy of the Lord. So here in this particular section, we see how dear the residents of Vrindavan are to Lord Sri Krishna. The Lord is equal to everyone. Samoham Sambhabhute Shunamay Dvaisis Trinatriya. But the Krishna is like a mirror, or you might say, as you approach him, he reciprocates. Yayatam Mam Pratpadyante Tam Statai Gupajami Aham. So that verse indicates that according to how one approaches the Lord, the Lord reciprocates. The gopis are considered the best of all devotees. Why? Because they sacrifice everything for the pleasure of the Lord, even their very life. And there's a one particular pastime where it explains where Krishna, he's there, and um, Narada Muni is with him also. Narada is asking Krishna, how is he? Krishna says, well, actually, it's good you ask because I have a headache. Oh, Narada becomes a little concerned. You have a headache? Oh, what can we do to relieve your headache? Well, Krishna says there's only one way. And I need the dust of the lotus feet of my devotees. And by taking that dust and placing it on my head, my headache will be uh, gone. Nara is a little astonished to hear that because he knows that this is a very almost quite impossible task to find someone who can uh, or who is willing to give their foot dust to be placed on, a, on the head of the Lord to relieve him from his headache. And so Krishna could understand Narada's hesitation, but then he said, go and try and see if you can find. And so he goes traveling and he meets with these sages of Dandya Karanya forest. Uh, they're great souls. Actually, they qualified themselves in that pastime to become gopis in their next manifestation. They're called the uh, Rishichari gopis. There are six categories of gopis. They are one of them. But in that, in that identity as sages in the Dandakaranya forest, which is within the, the realms of the pastimes, of Lord Ramchandra, they were approached by Narada. Now they welcome Narada so nicely, and then they inquire for him, how is Krishna? Well, then he explains, well, actually Krishna has sent me here because he has a headache and he wants the dust of your lotus feet on his head, and that will relieve his headache. The sages become a little disturbed by the request and they respond, our foot dust on the head of the Supreme Lord? Don't you know we will go to hell for that? Narada, you're asking something that is not possible or even sensible. So don't continue. And so Narada could understand and he left. And then he went to see other devotees and they all gave the same response. We cannot give our foot dust to be placed on the head of the Supreme Lord. So Narada came back unsuccessful and he communicated his experiences to the Lord 
Then the Lord immediately said, well, actually, you should go to Vrindavan and uh, ask the gopis. So thinking this was a good idea, he went. And then he came and the gopis, oh, Narada Muni's here. So they gathered around Narada because they know he always gets the chance to see the Lord. So they always want to know what's happening with the Lord. What is he doing? Why is he, you know, not with us here in Vrindavan? So they inquired in so many ways. And then finally they asked, well, how is Krishna? And then he says, well, actually, he's not so well. He has a headache. Oh, really? He has a headache? What can we do? Can we help in any way? He said, yes, that is why I'm here. He says the only way that his headache will be relieved is that if he can get the foot dust from your feet to be placed on his head. And immediately the dead the gopis start scraping the foot dust from their feet and making piles of dust. Uh, Nard is a little astonished how quickly they responded without even asking anything else. And then the gopi said, come on, Narada, take this foot dust and go immediately. Krishna has a headache. And then Narada has to ask the question. He says, don't you know that anyone who puts their foot dust on the head of the Lord will go to hell? The gopi said, we don't mind going to hell. We can go to hell forever. But if it cures Krishna's headache, then we're willing to go to hell. And so... Uh, Narada, and then he gets an insight about what is the actual love of the gopis. And then he immediately comes and brings the foot dust to Krishna. Krishna was just showing Narada who are the real devotees, those devotees that were willing to sacrifice even their life for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So therefore, it's mentioned by the Shastras and by the Acharyas uh, that there is no greater devotion anywhere than the gopis of Sri Vrindavan Dham. As it continues here, it says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that no one can receive the real favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead without following in the footsteps of the gopis. The real favor. One can es establish some favor or one can acquiesce some favor of the lord but here it says real favor what is that real favor even the goddess of fortune could not receive the same favor of the gopis although she underwent severe austerities and penances for many years lord chaitanya mahaprabhu discusses this point with vekata but in chaitanya charitamrita nine 111 through 131 of Madhya Lila. The Lord inquired from Vedanta, but your worshipful goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, always remains on the chest of Narayan, and she is certainly the most chaste woman in the creation. However, my Lord is Lord Sri Krishna, a cowherd boy engaged in tending cows. Why is it that Lakshmi, being such a chaste wife, wants to associate with my Lord? Just to associate with Krishna, Lakshmi abandoned all transcendental happiness in Vaikuntha and for a long time accepted vows and regulative principles and performed unlimited austerities. Then Kantabhatha replied, Lord Krishna and Lord Narayana are one and the same, but for the pastimes of Krishna are more relishable due to their sportive nature. They are very pleasing for Krishna's shaktis. Since Krishna and Narayan are both the same person, personality, Lakshmi's association with Krishna did not break her vow of chastity. Rather, it was, was in great fun that the goddess of fortune wanted to associate with Lord Krishna. The goddess of fortune considered that her vow of chastity would not be damaged by her relationship with Krishna. Rather, by association with Krishna, she could enjoy the benefit of the rasa dance. If she wanted to enjoy herself with Krishna, what fault is there? Why are you joking about this? 
So Venkatabad's response is in line with, with religious principles. And what is that response? That there's no difference between Krishna and Narayan, but there is a difference. In this sense, there is no difference as both are the husband of the goddess of fortune. But in Krishna, all the opulences and a more complete manifestation are found in Krishna as opposed to Lord Narayan. And in, in the relationship with Krishna, it's more sportive and it's more imbued with the mood of sweetness, where in Narayan, there is more, or there is the mood of awe and reverence. So the mood is different. And that is the main difference between the association of these two. And then in Krishna, those who attain to the word, to the association in Krishna in the spiritual world, see Krishna as the lovable boy of Vrindavan. And they do not worship him in the mood of, of Aishwarya Bhav or opulence, where that is the mood of Narayan. And there is no other mood with Narayan. But with Krishna, it is very sweet, intimate. And even in some cases, Krishna takes the subordinate position. Now, in this discussion, as mentioned, Lord Chaitanya replied, I know that there is no fault in the goddess of fortune, but still she could not enter into the rasa dance. We hear this from the revealed scriptures. The authorities of the Vedic knowledge met Lord Ramachandra and Dandakaranya, and by their penances and austerities, they were allowed to enter into the rasa dance. But can you tell me why the goddess of fortune could not get that opportunity. So here, Lord Chaitanya refers to those sages. They were, and they later became the Rishi Chari Gopis, and they entered into the Rasa dance. To this, Venkatabhata replied, "I cannot enter into the mystery of this incident. I am not. I am an ordinary living being." My intelligence is limited and I am always disturbed. How can I understand the pastimes of the Supreme Lord? They are deeper than millions of oceans. So here there is some concern. Why Lakshmi, although she performed austerities and penances, although she is uh, not breaking her chastity when she wants to associate with Krishna, still she could not do so. Lord replied, Lord Chaitanya replied, Lord Krishna has a specific characteristic. He attracts everyone's heart by the mellow of personal conjugal love. By following in the footsteps of the inhabitants of the planet known as Brajaloka, or Golokan Vrindavan, one can attain the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. However, the inhabitants of that planet do not know that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unaware that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, the residents of Vrindavan like Nanda Maharaj, Yasoda Devi, and the gopis treat Krishna as their beloved son or lover. Mother Yasoda accepts him as her son and sometimes binds him to a grinding mortar. Krishna's cowherd boys think he is an ordinary boy and gets up on his shoulders. In Galoga Vrindavan, no one has any desire other than to love Krishna. So you can see, we get a little glimpse into the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. And Krishna is never seen in a, support, in a superior position. He's either seen as an equal or lesser. And he takes that role in order to accept service from his devotees who worship him as a friend, as a lover, as a child. <laughs> and this is the highest mood of devotional worship anywhere because in that loving mood, the sweetness of the intimacy of that exchange becomes heightened by that, that mood 
where there is no superiority. And Krishna also says that. He's not so much attracted by people who worship him in, in law and awe and reverence. But if one worships him and chastises him for stealing butter or wants to play with him and wrestle with him as a friend or he wants to have a intimate loving relationships and, and conjugal love, these are the sweet attitudes that Krishna looks forward to. Therefore, when Krishna took his birth in the jail cell of Kamsa, he immediately wanted to go to Vrindavan. He's called Lila Purushyota, Shotam, and therefore he enjoys the Leelas of Vrindavan as the topmost expression of loving relationships with himself, with him. So here we can see the goddess of fortune was not able to get into Vrindavan. Why? She could not give up her mood of Aishwarya Bhav. She was so conditioned, not conditioned, that is her nature. It's, you can't fault her for her nature. Her nature is she worships the Lord in awe and reverence. And here it says the conclusion is that one cannot associate with Krishna unless he has fully received the favor of the residents of Rajabhumi. Therefore, if one wants to be delivered by Krishna directly, he must take to the service of the residents of Vrindavan who are, un, who are the unalloyed devotees of the Lord. Is that it? Is there more? That's the end of the purport. Okay. All right. So um, what we see here is that you know, uh, one has to follow in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, who has come as a devotee of Krishna in the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham, when we follow his direction in the worship of Krishna through the mood of Vrindavan Dham, then one can actually enter into Sri Vrindavan Dham. Uh, there is a beautiful verse. I'd like to see if we can find that verse. It's from the Manjusa, Manjusha Strotra, Strotra, I think it's called Manjusa, Manjusa. And it's the second line, I can't remember the first line. It says, Ramya, R-A-M-Y-A, Ramya, hmm. Uh, a, it always slips my mind. If I uh, go to my, let's see. Uh, let me figure out how to get to my other part of my computer. How do I do that? Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, so you want to leave the Zoom screen? Is that what you wanted to have? Yeah. You can uh, you can uh, go back to the browser for that. Uh, are you using a MacBook or a, a PC? A PC. Okay. I think it should be Control Tab, and then you should be able to switch across the tabs. Mm, control what? Uh, tab. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, you must be on the full screen. If you press escape, uh, you can see your browser. Oh, okay, yeah, escape does it. Okay, we got it. Okay, and I'll be with you in the moment here. Uh, we'll go to this particular verse. It's such a nice verse. Um, Let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It's called Chaitanya Manjusa. It's a particular verse. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a search and we'll see what we can come up with here. So, yeah, Chaitanya Mata Manjusa. Okay, all right, I have it in here. Maybe can we do a let me do a share screen here so you can all see it. How do I go to share screen now? Do I go back to the video? Yes, Guru Maharaj, you have to go back to the Zoom and uh, click on share screen, green button. Okay, and then all right, and then I just, there you go. Can you still hear me? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, can everyone see that verse? Yes, yes Maharaj. Okay, Ararana Bhagavan Rajesa Taniya Tadharma Vrindavan Vamyaka Chivupasana Vajavadu Vagena Yakalpita Srimad Bhagavata Amalam Puranam Premu Pumarta Mahan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Mataridam Tata Dara Nathara. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see here. Well, this is an explanation of the verse. <laughs> it's not the translation. But it's good. What is the objective of human life? It is said the objective of human life is to attain love of God. That's all. That makes him perfect, nothing more. His mission has been described by one of the Acharyas, Vishwanath Chakravarti. He said that the mission of Lord Chaitanya is Araranyo Bhagavan Vrajay Sotanaya. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is Aradya. Aradya means he is worshipful. He is the only worshipful personality, Radio Bhagavan Vrajay Sotanaya Tadharma Vrindavana. As Lord Krishna is worshipful, similarly, his place of pastimes, Vrindavana, is also worshipped. Well, Aradyo Bhagavan Rajay Satanaya Tadama Vrindava. And what is the best kind of worship from, for Krishna? Here, Ram Yakashi Upasanam Rajavadu Vargena Yakalpika. The highest kind of worship is as demonstrated by the damsels of Vrindavan, the girlfriends of Krishna. Yes, they have no adulteration. Simply, they were always thinking of Krishna. Krishna is going outside the village, and they were thinking at home, oh, Krishna's, I mean to say, so, soul is so soft. He is wandering in the jungle. There are so many particles of stone. He must be pricking. And the way, this way, Krishna is there. They are at home, but they are thinking of Krishna, how he is walking, how his soft foot is suffering. In this way, they are always absorbed in Krishna consciousness. They are not Vedantists, they are not Brahmanas, they are not educated, they were cowherd girls. But the love for Krishna was so intense that Lord Chaitanya recommends, oh, there is no better worship than that is being demonstrated by the damsels of Vrindavan. Ramya Kaschirupasana Vajavadu Vargena Yalkal Pita. Then what is the source of understanding Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Amalam Puranam. If you study Srimad Bhagavatam, then you will attain all these things. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Madharidam and Prema Pumartha Mahan. So this verse kind of puts everything in perspective that the highest form of worship is the damsels of Rinjava. And this is a very unique verse. We don't have any other verses from this particular Shastra called Chaitanya Mata Manjusa. This is the only one that's been available, but it illustrates the essence of Krishna consciousness. 
that the that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the supreme personality of Godhead. He's teaching that the highest form of worship is the Blanzels of Vrindavan and the highest form of knowledge to receive that highest form of worship is Srimad Bhagavatam. So in this verse, everything is there. <laughs> okay, so we can return here. You are, let me see, stop share screening, right? Maharaj, do you want to share the verse? Should I share the verse, Maharaj? That will um, stop your we did, we did that, right? Uh, we already finished the share, right? Yes, Maharaj. We'll stop the share. Okay. So this, um, this little interaction between Lakshmi Devi and her mood and the discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Vaikanta Bhatt. Vaikanta Bhatt is a worshiper of Lakshmi, Lakshmi Narayan. He, is the, he was the actual father of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. When Chaitanya met him in South India, he stayed at his house for four months during the rainy season. And that's at the time where he met uh, little Gopal, who later became Gopal Bhatta Goswami. But they had, they shared so much intimate relationships. The Lord stayed at the Katabat's house for four months. And you see, here's one particular discussion that the Lord initiates. Oh, your goddess of fortune. She is very chaste, yes. But, and she's not breaking her chastity by going to her husband who is appearing in another form. But still, she's not allowed. She can't get in. Why? Because she cannot give up her mood of awe and reverence. <laughs> that is her mood. And she's not faulted for that, but it just shows that she's fixed in worshiping the Lord in that mood. But the more intimate, she wants to go into a more intimate relationship with Krishna. And by trying to, to uh enter into Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, especially the Rasa dance. In the Shastras, it mentions that of all the pastimes of Krishna, the most intimate, the most sweetest, and the highest of all is Krishna dancing Rasa dance with the gopis. And uh, Lakshmi Devi, she wants to enter, but she cannot because of her mood. So uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is teaching, and we are followers of Sri Chaitanya Maha. He is teaching the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham by following his process of devotional service as taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which expands itself in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which teaches that mood of Vrindavan, especially in the 10th canto verses chapters 29 through 34 that is called the, the gopi gita with five five chapters that described krishna's relationship with the gopis in vrindavan so uh, it's interesting that the the highest and most exalted form of devotion to krishna which attracts krishna completely is not by educated brahmanas not by great personalities who are actually great controllers, not even by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, or even Sankarshan himself, but uh, apparently ordinary cowherd girls. <laughs> so you see, what is the quality? The, the quality is that their hearts, simply they gave their hearts completely to Krishna. So to study the love of the gopis means to understand what is the topmost position of loving relationship. And that position, that type of relationship can only be done towards Krishna. It cannot be done in this material world because only Krishna has those qualities where he can track, attract someone so completely and so perfectly that there is nothing left. No, there's not a drop or even a pinch 
of personal motivations in their service to Krishna. The gopis dress nicely for the pleasure of Krishna. The gopis do whatever they do simply for the pleasure of Krishna. Sometimes it looks like they're acting like, like ordinary girls and they have their own desires to fulfill, but that is just what it appears to them. They know what Krishna likes, and therefore, when they want to please Krishna, they always think how to please Krishna. And if Krishna wants them to do something, or they know Krishna wants them to do something, it doesn't matter what it is, they're willing to do whatever Krishna wants. But Krishna simply, uh, and the gopis, well, many times feel unhappy in transcendental love because Krishna is gone. He's not there. Just like when we chant the prayers to the Shikshastika prayers, the last verse is, Alishyava pinaratam punastuman adarshanam marmahatam kado tuva yata tata vavadata tu vampato matpranam nastu sa evana paraha. This verse is the highest expression that, of love that is spoken by Srimati Radharani, who appears at in the, who, who, who Lord Chaitanya takes the mood of Srimati Radharani and he's speaking these verses. And this last verse is, um, it doesn't matter, even if you break me, you make me broken hearted by not becoming present before me, you can do anything because you are my worshipful Lord unconditionally. So this is, this is the highest expression of love because love is not selfish. Love is completely selfless. If there's selfishness in love, it is not law of love anymore, it is lust. That's why in the material world we say that although people have a, a lot of affection and attraction for others, still the motivation is personal. And when that motivation is, or that uh, personal desire is no longer fulfilled, that weakens the relationship and many times it also breaks the relationship. So we can understand what is real love. There is no, nothing personal in it. It's just for the pleasure of the object of the beloved. And Krishna is the same way. He only wants to please his devotees and the devotees only want to please him. So there's a competition between the residents of Vrindavan and Krishna who can please Krishna the most. But Krishna is so beautiful that when they think of him, they become so attracted to thinking about him, they cannot stop thinking about him. Although you find many places throughout the scriptures that even Radharani becomes angry at Krishna in so many different ways and finds ways to find fault with Krishna, her anger is called, uh, it's, it's prem man, it's man with prem in it. In other words, it's her anger laced with love. And only for those who can understand Radharani's mood, which is not possible, can I understand how one can become angry at another person in, in the mood of love. <laughs> uh, there is one temple in Barsana, it's called uh, Man Mandir. And Man means uh, anger. So when Radharani gets angry at Krishna. But Krishna likes that and he enjoys that because in the highest flavor of loving relationships, variety manifests itself in different forms. And if love doesn't have a variety of interactions, then the love becomes less uh, flavorful. So variety gives that. So one of the ways that uh, Radharani shows her love for Krishna is by getting angry at him. <laughs> and Krishna does things to make her angry just to bring out her love in that way. And uh, so there's many, many beautiful pastimes that illustrate that. But here, the point is that Lakshmi Devi, she is the goddess of fortune. She is most beautiful, most qualified, and she bestows her favors 
on, on living entities everywhere by giving them material fortune and also spiritual benefits. But her love is, is what we say, it hasn't reached the point of uh, intimacy. And that intimacy is somewhat blocked by the mood of awe and reverence. So we, we can't think, well, you know, I worship Krishna in the mood of awe and reverence. It's like I go to the temple and I see the deity there. I bow down to the deity. I offer prayers to the deity. And um, I do service for the deity. That's all in awe and reverence. The Prabhupada would sometimes chide us and say, you can't go into the temple and think, well, I'm going to be in the mood of the residence of Vrindavan. And so you climb on the back of the deity. <laughs> Well, was it not like that? Because only when one comes to the stage of intimacy in love, which is a stage that develops through one's bhakti, and that's a process, then one can actually experience or enter into the mood of Vrindavan that. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is opening the door to Vrindavan Dham through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. By chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we purify our heart and we develop higher consciousness. And that higher consciousness uh, awakens our attraction to Krishna in different features of Krishna's existence. We get attracted to Krishna in so many different ways. And as that attraction develops and becomes very specific in that attraction, one serves in that particular mood, and then one gradually starts to enter into the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Well, that's, uh, that's just a brief summation of the whole process. It's much more intricate and detailed than that. But when we go to the temple, we see the deities are Radha and Krishna, right? You have Radha Kalachandi, you have Radha Vrindavan Nath, you have Radha, Jan, Radha Vrindavan Chandra, you have Radha Govinda, Radha Gopinath, Radha Madan Mohan, Radha Shamsundar, um, Radha Raman, Radha Damodar, so many. We have so many temples, the deities are Radha and Krishna. So, but we're worshiping Radha and Krishna in the mood of Aishwarya Bhav or in the mood of Vaikuntha. So therefore, Radha and Krishna are appearing to us in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. But we continue with our worship, and as we make progress in the higher mellows of devotion and service, then Krishna reveals his mood of Vrindavan in the hearts of his devotees. And that's a very intricate process. We're just giving you a complete not a complete, uh, a brief summation of this uh, process. But if one follows in the footsteps of the damsels of Vrindavan, one can uh, accelerate the mood of Vrindavan and ultimately come to the process of worshiping Krishna in one of the four higher rasas that are mentioned in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Okay, so a uh, very a sweet verse. It shows the glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham and especially the devoted yes. yogis because out of all of the moods of Sri Vrindavan Dham, Madhurya Ras is the most intense, uh, intense expression of love. Um, e each of the moods, mm, Dasyaras, Sakyaras, Vatsayaras, and Madhuryaras, all have an intensification of love according to the relationship of the interchange, serving Krishna, serving him as a friend, serving him as a parent or a child. But in Madhuryaras, all of that uh, sweetness from the other rasas are included in the Durya Ras, but there's an added element in the Durya Ras, 
and that is the intimacy of lover and beloved in Radha and Krishna. So this is the highest form of devotion, and this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching. This is the important thing. So we follow in the footsteps of Mahaprabhu by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and hearing about the love of the residents of Vrindavan for Krishna by reading and hearing the works of Srila Prabhupada, especially Chaitanya Charitamrita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And we can develop that attraction for Krishna in that same mood. And that's the goal of Krishna consciousness. Okay. We can uh, stop here. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, today's it was such a sweet class. Very oh, one, yes, <laughs> Maharaj, how wonderfully you explain all the rasas. It was very intoxicating, very nice. And thanks so much, Maharaj, for sharing the Chaitanya Manjusha. Very enlightening. I don't have any questions, but devotees, if you have any questions, just feel free to unmute yourselves and please go ahead. Hare Krishna. You can also can we, unmute your videos so Maharaj can see you. <laughs> Maharaj, you were saying something? I was going to say what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Krishna. I see that Archana Zatara has she, her hand up first, so she can go and then I'll, I'll go after. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Nice. You were talking about the five types of gopis. So if uh, if you could explain me uh, the five types of gopis and uh, like uh, which of the gopis could join in the Ratlila and which of them could not and why. Uh, it's a little confusing for me. <laughs> You're asking a real... A real high question here. <laughs> well, there's the Rishi Chari Gopis. There is the uh, what is the the uh, Rishi Chari Gopis, the sages, and then you have the. There's one purport, at least I know of one purport in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the tenth canto, describes the. Uh, the different categories of gopis. If you want, if you give me a few mi minutes, I can find that verse. Should I do that? Yes, Maharaj. Please. Thank you. Okay. It'll maybe take me, I think I know where to go to find it. It's, um, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can find it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like it's going to be a little harder than I thought. <laughs> Yeah, I have it somewhere. Okay, okay, we got it. Uh, so, um, Nina, go to Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Adi Lila, Chapter Four, Verse Two Seventeen. Ali Lila, chapter 4, verse 217. Okay. Let's see, we get, how do we get full screen here again? Maharaj, can you see the verse? It is on the screen. Yeah, okay. It is said that gopis are divided into five groups. Sakis, Nitya Sakis, Pranasakis, Priyasakis and Para Prestas, all these fear. Okay, the Para are eight, and then it describes more about these. These are the five groups Nityasakis, Pranasakis, Priyasakis, like that. You can go down the page and see what else it says. That's all. That just describes that these are the five groups. Hmm. So I have that, and that's the five listing. And then there's, there's another group called the uh, the uh, Rishi Chari Gopis. There is the Prana Chari Gopis. There's another verse that describes that's in the Bhagavatam. And these categories with definitions of each of the five categories. So they'll take a little research to find that one. But the, the, there are five categories of gopis. And um, it explains in one pastime that only certain gopis were allowed to come into the rasa dance. Others were either too young at the time or for whatever reason, they weren't qualified to dance with Krishna in the rasa dance. So there's category, there's millions and billions of gopis, and they each have their different groups. Like that. And they have their different categories within their groups. Mm -hmm. It's quite complex in terms of the different groups, who's in the group, what are the moods of the different groups, like that. Maharaj, do this mood interchange between the Sakis or the uh, or whoever is in one group, they always remain in that group. Yeah, is that's their some... group. Yeah, that's their group. It's like Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari. So he's in charge of one particular group. Um, we have the eight principal gopis and then we have the Astasakis. So there's eight principal gopis and then there's the Astasakis. The Astasakis is what we see in Mayapur. Then you have Lalita, Vishaka, Rangadevi, Sudevi, Induleka, Tandavidya, Chitra, Bhadra, not, not, not Bhadra, Chitra, Lepa. and, and uh, Induleka, and then you have uh, Tung Tungavidya, and there's one more. I forgot the other. Champakalata. Champakalata, right. And these are the Astasakis. But then there's another group called the Principal Gopis, which includes Lilita, Vishaka, um, uh, Padma, Bhadra, uh, Shamala, um, who else? Um, Radharani's, um, uh, what we say, counterpart, 
Chandravali. Chandravali, yeah, yeah. Chandravali, yeah, she's the other one. So these are the principal gopis here. That's another category. So the principal gopis and then, and then the astasakis. We hear mostly about the astasakis. Padma, and then you have Shaibya. Shaibya is also there. And somebody found something here, chapter, varieties of leaders of the gopis here. Shamalabhadra here, it's mentioned. So yeah, there are, are millions and millions of gopis and they all have their different groups and categories like that. But the highest form of worship, even higher than the gopis are the manjaris. Now the manjaris are subordinate, but they're higher in the sense that their service is to make arrangements for Radha and Krishna. Uh, or for it with Krishna and the gopis. So their service is to, they don't associate with Krishna directly, but they're associating with the gopis in order to arrange for Rod and Krishna to meet together. Um, and therefore our movement, uh, as Prabhupada said, is in Manjari Bhav. We are, we are assisting the gopis in their activities in the spiritual world. So preaching is in, if you preach Krishna consciousness, that is in the mood of the gopis. Because the preaching means to, to bring other living entities to, towards Krishna, and that's the mood of the manjaris, is to bring others towards Krishna, who Krishna can enjoy with other living entities. So that's the mood of preaching. That's called, that's also in the mood of Madhurya Ras. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Yeah, it gets quite detailed. So um, I, I don't know how far I can go in that category. It's, I'm not qualified <laughs> to really explain things in, in detail. Hey Krishna Maharaj, was the verse that you're looking for in the 29th chapter? I, I can share the screen if that helps. I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's there somewhere. I'm not sure where. So you're talking about two categories of gopis? Yeah, nitya siddhas and sadhana siddhas, but then there's more categories also. Shruti chari gopis, rishi chari gopis, yeah, yeah you're, getting, you're getting closer now. Shruti chari gopis. So these are the different categories of gopis. Nitya siddha. Mm -hmm. There's those who are eternally gopis and then there's those who become gopis. The rishicharis are sadhanas that are the gopis. They have become gopis. They were formerly the sages of Dandya Karanya Kvaras. Yeah, so it's all, that verse, yeah, gives you a lot of information. Good, study this and you can understand what is this, the mood of Vrindavan, the mood of Vrindavan. But we should also study it under the direction of the spiritual master so we don't uh, mistakenly think of something in, the, in a way that it's not correct. Because uh, these moods are not easy, this is simply by reading. One has to hear it from the spiritual teachers, those who are qualified. Mm -hmm. Hi Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Thank you for such a sweet, sweet class. It was wonderful. Um, I just have a couple of questions. One of them, 
Um, you even piqued my interest a little bit more just now with a comment that you made. I just want to make sure that I understood that properly, that, that preaching is in the mood of Madhurya Rasa. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, because my one of my questions was about Madhurya Rasa, because I, when I first came to Krishna Consciousness, I was always told that that was only available to Srimati Radharani. Um, but then, you know, as I got deeper and deeper, I would sometimes hear in classes that it, it is available to devotees as well. So could you explain that a little bit? Yeah. You have to follow in the footsteps of an eternal resident of the spiritual world who's in that particular rasa. And you serve and you worship that particular eternal associate by the mercy of that eternal associate and by your practice of devotional service, uh, you gradually come to the higher and higher stages where you can enter into a particular mood. Now, if that's not your mood, then that eternal person who you're worshiping will, will direct you towards what is your mood. But that's, these, are, these are the high, these are, you know, ones, uh, what we call it there, what is it called? It's called Silver Pranali, but it, it's another one is uh, another terminology. Is one's eternal mood in the spiritual world. So one has to practice the sadhana for Raghunuga Bhakti. That's explained by Chaitanya Chari in Chaitanya Chari by Lord Chaitanya himself. But one should do, do everything under the guidance of one's spiritual master. And not by email either. <laughs> you can't do it by email. It's not possible. One should hear from and question the spiritual master and get guidance. But not everyone is eligible to practice that level of devotion. It's those who have reached a certain stage of sadhana bhakti when they can move into to, uh, raganuga bhakti. Arvaiti Bhakti leads to Raganuga Bhakti. But Raganuga Bhakti is the goal because without coming to the stage of spontaneous attraction to Krishna, we cannot enter into the spiritual world. We have to be fully attracted to Krishna and serve Krishna in that mood of devotion. So if you want some help in that direction, I would suggest you find one book. It's called Spontaneous Devotional Service. It's a small book and was written by uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj who describes the process in that book. <laughs> okay. It's a little red hardcover book. It's about 80 pages. And he covers a lot of, maybe a little bit longer, he covers many of the uh, difficulties that devotees have uh, in understanding this whole science of Raghunuga Bhakti. It, take, it takes the formula, and all he also discusses what is that mood of Raghunuga Bhakti that's within ISKCON and how one can uh, attain to that stage of practice. So that book is nice. It's coming from Shastra. He's taking statements from the different Shastras and putting it together so we have a complete picture of how Raga Bhakti looks. But love is, love is spontaneous. If love is not spontaneous, it's just, a, it's just some form of attraction. That's all it is. When attraction reaches uh, 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 spontaneity, then it turns into love. Thank you for that, Maharaj. Um, and the other question I had was something from the purport or from the verse that I just heard for I heard this for the first time today: the golden streaks on Krishna's chest from Lakshmi Devi. Um, what is that about? Where did that come from? <laughs> I've never heard it before. I think it's beautiful. 
Um, what was your question again? I'm sorry, I somehow I missed the point. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, in the in the verse, it talks about the golden streaks on Krishna's chest from Lakshmi Devi. Yeah. Well, yeah, Krishna wears that golden streak on his chest and that uh, he keeps Lakshmi Devi in that form on his chest all the time. Mm. So she's always there in that form. That's her. <laughs> she manifests herself on the chest of Krishna in the form of these golden, these are golden hairs. Sometimes they call them streaks, but they're golden hairs on the chest of Krishna. She remains there eternally. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful answers. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> we have Thank a you. question from uh, um, Mohan uh, Sini Radha Mataji, she's writing, is it even needed to reach the highest rasa for all of us? Well, everyone should find their own rasa. It doesn't necessarily mean everyone has the same rasa. But all rasas are complete. Lakshmi Devi has pure love for, for Krishna, uh, for, for Lord Narayan, but she can't enter into the mood of, of Krishna Bhakti. She can worship Krishna in the mood of Narayan, which is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there's nothing less in her, but she doesn't have that mellow of the Vrindavan mood. The Vrindavan mood is exclusive. But still, her love is perfect. So there's perfection on different levels. That's all. It's not that everyone has to come to Madhurya Ras to reach perfection. That's not that's not the understanding. That's not that's not the process. One has to understand their own relationship with Krishna and then ultimately enter into that through the process of bhakti. Arjuna was a warrior, but that was perfect. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gajendra was an elephant. But that was perfect. So we all said we all have that perfection in a certain category as the nature of our existence. Everyone has pure love for Krishna in a certain mood. To find that is the process of Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj, for your answer. I have another reader. She's writing. My question is, how to reach that stage of the highest rasa? Is it possible in this lifetime? Mataji adds. Well, some people say it takes two lifetimes at least. Some of them say three. But it is possible in one lifetime. Thank you, Maharaj. We have another question from um, Saivek uh, Prabhu, and he's asking, how can we, Baddha Jivas, assist Krishna and Radharani? What is a Jiva's role? To serve Krishna according to the instructions of your spiritual master. That's all. Your spiritual master is a pure devotee. You, he... You serve your spiritual master. He offers your bhakti to Krishna through his pure devotion. And Krishna accepts that. And when Krishna accepts your devotion through the, through the agency of the spiritual master, you get, you get increased attraction to Krishna. You get detachment from material activities. And you get happiness in devotional service. These three things occur when you please Krishna. 
Well, following the instructions of the spiritual master is the path to perfection. And as you make advancement, it says one should inquire into well, how can make one can make further advancement. So then the spiritual master may, may reveal to you, you know, in a more direct way, how you can uh, make more spirit, more advancement. As you, make, as you make advancement, you should also be thinking how to make more advancement. The indication of advancement is how much we're losing our attraction for the activities in the material world. If we're still attached to the activities in the material world, we can't even consider uh, Radha and Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Uh, we can hear about them, but we can't, we can't approach them. We have to be completely free from all the all material desires before you can actually start entering into the mood of, of uh, spontaneous devotional service. So follow the process, it works. <laughs> and therefore, it's many, the process is there in the nectar of devotion, step-by-step -step understanding. It's mentioned in lectures by Srila Prabhupada, and I'm sure many other spiritual teachers have also given us the process. Thank you very much, Maharaj. We have another question on the chat. Uh, and Jyoti Mataji says, um, if one thinks one will end up in trying in sense control and only understanding of soul platform, how much time such soul will take to reach the Lord's kingdom? That cannot be determined. And that depends on your intensity of your devotion. It becomes as as fast or as slow as your as your devotion intensifies. You, you could be fully Krishna conscious in one moment, or it could take you hundreds of years. <laughs> Just try to give your love to Krishna. That's all. You want an easy formula. Do everything to please Krishna. That's all. Krishna is lovable. And the more you learn about Krishna, the more you're, you'll see your attraction to Krishna becomes natural. But if you don't hear about Krishna, if you don't worship Krishna, or if you don't take instructions from those who are situated on the on the devotional platform, then it'll, it'll take forever. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Sri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you, Nina. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this very important lecture about striving for uh, your spontaneous devotional service. Um, supposing we are not, you know, very advanced in our Krishna consciousness, and we are still just doing the simple things in Krishna consciousness, is that counted as service? Like say, all I do is I'm going to the temple, I take darshan, I attend the morning program and all I'm doing is just taking part in the morning program. I don't have any specific DT worship service or anything, but I'm just attending Mangalarti or Darshanarti or Guru Puja and singing no, for the before before you before you can actually make advancement in bhakti, you have to hear and chant the glories of the Lord as a regular feature of your daily activities. If you don't get attracted to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, you won't you won't really develop that attraction. Without that attraction, you won't really become attached to Krishna at all. So the you have to, first you have to 
and chant the glories of the Lord. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu. Satam Pathangam Mamavirya Sambhidam Vavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata. The scriptures are full of statements. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is the way to, to, to progress in devotional service. The hearing is very, very important, which means hearing the class, hearing from the pure devotees, hearing about the Lord. Otherwise, we'll just be become ritualistic. I go to temple, I take darshan, go back home and continue my activities, but there's no yeah, serious... That's cool. That's called churchianity. <laughs> my, my, my now we'll call it temple entity. <laughs> mm. Yeah, ritual, ritualistic uh, uh, religious practice is there. The one thinks they're okay if they give some donation, they bow down, they offer something, and uh, they they do everything in a very uh, what we say organized way, but they don't hear and chant the glories of the Lord. That's the essence. That's where you make your advancement. You have to learn about Krishna. You have to hear about Krishna. You have to develop attraction for Krishna. And that's how you do it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And that's why Prabhupada gave us so many books. <laughs> so we can so we can learn about Krishna. Any last minute questions, devotees? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. I have, uh, I don't have a question, but it's very, very nice. You have given them all the nectar today. Very beautiful. Thank you, Maharaj. It's very nice. Mutual understanding can be properly yeah. hoped through the authorized protocol. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada and to you, Guru Maharaj. It's always good to see you. It's Krishna Smita Devidasi from Charlotte. Missing. Oh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The sun is transparent via medium. Krishna Smita, the, the smiling Krishna. <laughs> Miss you, Guru Maharaj. When are you coming? Um, when Shamagori allows me to come again. <laughs> <laughs> Shama Gauri is my mother from Charlotte. <laughs> I have a few Charlotte mothers, but Shama Gauri is my Maha Ma Maha Mataji. Maharaj, <laughs> you are so Maharaj, I need your blessings and prayers. My markers are going up. What is going up? The the tumor markers. I went to the doctor and uh, they are going up. So a little bit. I, I know it's all in Krishna's hands, but sometimes it just worries and just kind of. <laughs> just need blessings of the devotees to to be Krishna conscious. It's just kind of um, just scary, Guru Maharaj. I, I'm not sure what's going up, but is it something that's not good? I don't know. 
Yeah, Guru Maharaj, remember, I'm going through cancer, so it oh, just... Oh, that's right, 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 right. Oh, that's right, yeah, now I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, just keep remembering Krishna and say, my dear Krishna, you have given me this nice cancer so I can remember you more and more. <laughs> How do you deal with it, Guru Maharaj? It's just so hard sometimes to say, okay, you know, it's just how to get well, yourself motivated to stay. Well, what can you do? You do your best to try to uh, cure yourself, but you understand everything depends on the mercy of the Lord. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And it's always good to see you, Guru Maharaj. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> Krishna always, Krishna gives us, Krishna's mercy sometimes comes in the form of these different diseases just to help us become more attracted to him. It, it has to be by your mercy too, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> well, to be. The, Thank mercy, you. the mercy is the holy name the mercy is hearing about Krishna mercy is serving Krishna these are all ways to get more and more mercy <laughs> Thank you Guru Maharaj it's always nice to see you looking forward to seeing you I pray that you get well and that way you Thank can do you. so, so that much that means a lot it means a lot, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare. Malita Tangi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept our humble obeisances. Uh, thank you so much for your crystal clear classes on this. Um, Maharaj, my question is, I was uh, trying to understand this, that the rishis um, from the Dandakaranya, they were also performing austerities and penances and they were, uh, uh, they became gopis. And we see that Mother Lakshmi is also performing austerities for the same end. And you said that he, she wasn't able to uh, give up worshipping the Lord in awe and reverence. Um, can you say something more about this? Because uh, she's doing austerities uh, means that she wants to get into that. Uh, her intention is to uh, associate with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But something that yes, the rishis she, could get, why she was not able to get... Uh, she has association with the Lord, but she wanted to associate with the Lord with the same, in the same mood as the gopis. But she couldn't. She couldn't give up her position as Lakshmi. <laughs> yeah, she was. She's Lakshmi, and she has that mood of warm reverence to toward Lord Narayan. She couldn't give it up. Lord Shiva mm -hmm. wanted it. Lord Shiva also wanted to come and to become a gopi. So he came to Vrindavan and uh, he was performing penances and austerities. He came in contact with that Lalita and then he explained he wanted to, to take part in the Rasa dance. She said, well, there's no men allowed. And uh, he, he begged some way. She said, all right, you take bath in this coon. So he went into the coon. When he came out, he was a little gopi, and he had a <clears throat> he still had his little uh, moon on his head. He had his crescent moon there, like a Shiva gopi. <coughs> so, but when Krishna saw him, he laughed. <laughs> he said, "Shiva." Even. <laughs> so, she, but Krishna was compassionate. He said, "You can become Digpala." You can guard the Rasta dance. He, he wasn't able to actually enter into that mood also. So Shiva also tried. 
but Krishna gave him the position as guarding the Rasta dance. So he uh, he did that service, but he couldn't he couldn't enter into the, the Rasta dance like the gopis. So yeah, it's just uh, it's a particular mood of devotion that requires cultivation. It may take many lifetimes to reach that. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Still uh, thinking it, it requires, I think we are, I have to contemplate more on this. Um, it still goes above my head. Lotus Pit over Yeah. Just read the books and cross those. Thank you for your wonderful association, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming a gopi is not not the, not the destiny destination of everyone. You know that. <laughs> and some can do it, and some can will never able to do it. They'll be in their own rasas. Harari Gupta, when he was with Lord Chaitanya, he wanted to. Uh, you know, Lord Chaitanya told Morari Gupta, you know, Krishna's pastimes are more sweeter than Ram's pastimes. Morari Gupta was an incarnation of Hanuman. And he told Morari Gupta, you go and you give up, you know, your worship of Ram and you worship Krishna in the, the mood of Vrindavan. But Morari Gupta, he tried, but he, 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 he couldn't do it. And the Lord Chaitanya glorified him. He said, of course you couldn't do it. You're Hanuman. So he took a piece of Gopi Chandan and wrote on the forehead of Murari Gupta Ramdas. He said, I couldn't give up my Raghu Pati. So one should be satisfied whatever their whatever their uh, mood of devotion is, but you have to learn that mood of devotion by practicing spontaneous devotional service under the direction of the resident of Vrindavan and with the guidance of your spiritual master. It's a process. It's just, you just can't just imagine, well, I want to be a gopi and then go for it. It's not like that. Thank you, Mother. Krishna, Thank you. when you make advancement, you start to understand internally more of your own mood of devotion. It becomes revealed internally. And that, when you start, when that starts to happen, then you speak to your spiritual master to get more clarification and understanding. You don't speak to anyone else but your spiritual master. And if your spiritual master is not there, then for, I mean, not, not on the planet, then you, you find someone who is on the same level of your spiritual master who can also, you can, this is something confidential. It's not something that you make public to everyone. In fact, if you make it public, you lose it. Right. Yeah, and it seems so far away because even with the holy name of the Lord, uh, I'm messing it up, uh, relationship with the holy name of the Lord also. So, yeah. Yeah, we all, feel, is, uh, we all feel like that. But do your best and go as far as you can in this life and then... Maybe if you, uh, next life, you'll finish up. <laughs> but if you can finish up in this life, that's the best. <laughs> Give it all you got. <laughs> I want Krishna and nothing else. That's what, you have to have that determination. I want Krishna and Maya, and then you'll get Maya instead of Krishna. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your valuable time and association. Thank you so much. I miss a rascal. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm speaking way beyond my level of realization, but I'm speaking from Shastra. So what I'm saying is not coming from me, it's simply coming from Shastra. Vanita, you have something to say. I, whenever you speak, it's like, uh, I mean, Ace serving in the, in the tennis play, we can't, we just have to uh, accept defeat. <laughs> when, Thank you, Maharaj. Krishna, cons Krishna consciousness is not accepting defeat, but accepting the fact that uh, we're not, we're never defeated in Krishna consciousness. You can't lose as long as you keep, as long as you stay in the process, you'll always be successful to some degree. This material world is just what it is. It's a place of suffering. It's meant to, it's a meant for a place who want to be, uh, people who want to uh, oppose the Lord rather than those who want to serve the Lord. It's not a place for any, any as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, material, material world is no place for a gentleman or a gentle lady. The one who knows the goal of life Thank you, Maharaj. Whatever you say, you may be, but for us, your mercy is, is like this. I heard in a recent class that, uh, you know, someone can climb up to a coconut tree by using the method of how to climb up the coconut tree. But that method is, will not be successful in going to the moon. So, <laughs> so for that, we need mercy. And then, you know, you are giving your mercy in the form of valuable classes and association. I hope we take to it and go up in devotional service. Thank you so much, Maria. Yeah, if you need some coconuts, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go to the moon, you have to, you have to find some persons who have that uh, space, spaceman quality. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Narad Muni. Yeah. I mean, we can see your uh, moonlight devotion by your uh, example and also your classes. So, you are our hope, Maharaj. Okay. Maybe the moon looks like a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe the coconut looks like the moon. <laughs> no, Mara. <laughs> okay, thank you. I hope Canada opens up this year so we can go to the Toronto Rathiatra. <laughs> uh, yes, Maharaja. I think uh, they are trying to open up fully from 1st of March. And if it continues, then uh, then uh, I think Ma uh, Bhakti Marg Maharaj would plan for Ratyatra. And also, this is 50th uh, anniversary of installation of uh, Shri Shri Radha Kirchur Gopinath. So, oh, that would be, I would definitely come if that was the, that was the program, yeah. Hari Bol. Thank you, Maharaj. Then I can bring you, then when I come, I'll bring you a coconut. <laughs> I can't give you the moon, but I can maybe bring you a coconut. <laughs> no, Maharaj, you have, I mean, you have passed the stage of coconut long back, Maharaj. 
<laughs> Very well. Any more questions, comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Gaurangi Mataji or Gail Mataji has a question. I think she's raised her hand. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Um, yeah, just following up on your last answer before, you know, <clears throat> about why Lakshmi Devi um, could not enter, you know, into that Vrindavan mood. You know, I think I understood that everybody has their nature, you know, and we generally can't change that. You can't make a, you can't get a, a pear from an apple seed like that, you know? So I'm wondering, since we all have our nature, including Lakshmi Devi, why would she even aspire to have the relationship with Krishna that the gopis did? Well, that's brought out in that discussion. She wanted to associate with her husband in a different mood. That's all. <laughs> Same husband. That's, yeah, that's mentioned there. Then Katabhata says that the Lord St. Tanya, what's the fault of Lakshmi for trying from that? It's her, still her husband. <laughs> but isn't the mood in which you associate with somebody like part of your nature? So for her to want to associate with him in, the, in that different mood, it seems like at odds with no, her nature. No, no, not a, no, because no, it's just, it's the same person. So if you're associating with that same person in different moods, if those moods are loving moods, then you do that. Love can take on different expressions of relationship. That's natural. Her mood is uh, is uh, her mo her mood is on reverence, yeah. But she couldn't give it up. That's why she just couldn't come to that platform of uh, you know the the mood of the gopis, which was that seeing Krishna not as uh, a object of worship, but seeing Krishna as an object of pure love. Without any, without any mood of uh, superiority, that was hard. I mean, even you can think about it, even yourself. Try to think about that type of mood, and you you get confused because when you see the deities or you think of Krishna, you always think of him in a, a superior position, and the mood is always uh, a mood of submission to Krishna. You have to give up that mood of submission. She couldn't do that. So she wanted to simultaneously retain that mood of superiority and and have the gopi's mood of that. No, she 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 performed austerities in order to enter into it, but she she wasn't able to change her her mood. That's all. But she was trying. Yeah. Mm. And that's what the Kanta Bhatta said. There's no fault in her trying to do that. But And the Lord Chaitanya said, but she couldn't do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just think it's interesting that she, I mean, I know you said, you know, when in a loving relationship, we, we, we have different moods with the same person, but it just yeah, seems it just yeah, seems kind true. of odd that you know the, that that same person would would want to have such a different mood with the same person. You know? yeah. I mean, there's the only there's only we only know two examples. One is Lakshmi, and one is Lord Shiva. Both tried to come into the Rasa dance. Both failed. Shiva got a little farther. He actually got into Vrindavan, but he wasn't able to enter into the, the dance. He was he just became the, the guard of the dance. That's all. Okay. He gave Thank up his you. he gave up his body as Shiva. He took a body of a gopi. Krishna still wouldn't let him <laughs> he would let him into the intimate circle though, because he knew yeah, who he was. Yeah, and, and besides, that's like an external type of 
thing, right? It's, it's not the, the body is not the mood. Well, in the spiritual world, it is. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too, but yeah. still, right? I mean, the, 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 the real thing is the mood. Well, yeah, the expression of love. We, Vaikuntha is is Aishwarya, and and uh, and Goloka is Madhurya. And Krishna is not the supreme Lord; he's simply the object of everyone's loving relationship, according to that relationship, as as gopis, as parent, as child, as friend. They don't see Krishna as God. They don't care whether Krishna is God or not. Even if they're informed that Krishna is God, it just goes past them. They might agree with you, but then they just immediately will dismiss it because the sweetness of the intimacy is, is much, much greater. And that's the way they worship the Lord. <laughs> yeah, we see it in the material world too. We have a relationship with someone in the position of subordination. It's not as sweet as when you have an intimate, loving relationship on the level of equals. It's completely, it is actually quite different. Mm -hmm. It's just the two realms of spiritual existence are two different levels of uh, intimacy. When Gopa Kumara came to uh, to Vaikuntha, and he he he, although he saw uh, uh, Narayan, and Narayan was happy to see him. Narayan knew, and and, and Gopa Kumara knew that he wasn't able to um, to stay in Vaikuntha. He knew he had to go somewhere else to to. So then when he reached Vaikuntha, then he was given the instructions, go down to earth again, go to Vrindavan and get a spiritual master. And then you can attain your actual destination. So he was a cowherd boy. And he had a friendly relationship, even with Narayan in the spiritual world. But that friendly relationship wasn't satisfying because it wasn't on the same level as his relationship with Krishna and the so that's mentioned in the in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita that although he was happy he wasn't fully satisfied and the Narayan knew it too <laughs> thank you Maharaj thank you so much yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay, I think we are pushing the clock here. <laughs> so, okay, we can uh, stop here and uh, we can meet again in two weeks somewhere in the material existence. <laughs>